Grab your power buffers, Wargamers. Today, we're taking a look at how to improve matchbox cars for use on the Wargaming table. As always, we are going to try to build to suit the game, and these are modern vehicles for modern problems requiring modern solutions. In the Black Ops game, we have a number of different maps and scenarios, and specifically one I want to call your attention to here is one that takes place on the airport. See that guy right there? The terminal. I had found this pack of Top Gun Maverick themed cars at the check stand at Safeway and went by it a couple of days and one day I said, you know what, in order to make a regular city look like an airport, I'm gonna need this guy right here. It's a jet fuel truck. Highly specialized. It's gonna go a long ways towards adding that flavor. But as is so often the case, and of course it comes with a grossly undersized jet. Let's grab one of our, let's grab one of our civilians here so I can show you for scale purposes. Uh, these cars are going to work out just fine. This is one of the Rebel Minis modern day figures. And as you can see, this, this jet here is way too small, very undersized. We may have to use that as a drone, but the jet fuel is going to provide plenty of cover. And of course, it comes with a nice big pickup truck. Now, this pickup truck looks to me like it's, it's a slightly different mold than this pickup truck. And I want to show you what it's going to look like when we're done. Scale is good, plenty of cover, the cargo. And uh, yeah, so with all that out of the way, the thing to point out is that most of your, here's a nice little crop duster. Again, the scale on this is pretty good. The, the crop duster is maybe a little undersized, but it's going to provide nice cover. It's going to make our table look like an airport. So we're going to go with it. One of the things to pay attention to is that it's a little too glossy. These look like toys. The good news is it's already painted for us for the most part, and we're going to use that to our advantage today. Uh, but in order to make it fit in with the rest of the table, because the rest of our table is not quite so glossy, we're going to take a couple of steps. I'll walk you through those starting in just two seconds. Okay, so the first problem we have to address is this. While you're moving guys around, you can't be dealing with that. Fortunately, the solution is very simple. You just need a couple of drops of the super duper glue. Now, bear in mind that each of these axles consists of a total of three different things that are likely to spin. You've got the tire, you've got the axle, and you've got the other tire. So when you do this, you want to make sure you're using enough super glue that you can pinch these tires snug up tight against the car and hold them for a little bit. Uh, you want to make sure to try to keep them as as regular as possible. You don't want to have, now you can see how they kind of slide back and forth. You don't want that going on. You want them nice and tight and just a little bit of pressure there and you're good to go. A lot of guys go through a lot more detail. If, you, if you're looking in YouTube for people that give you advice on how to deal with these cars and how to soup them up for games like Gaslands or whatever, They'll tell you that one of the things you do is you drill out these little studs here. I don't do that. The fact is, by the time we're done, all I'm looking to do, same thing as everything else, I'm looking for table-ready figures that look great. These windows are going to be smoky. You're not going to be able to see in. Anywhere that you can see with line of sight, you can get a brush in there. So we're going to tone that down just a little bit. And to give you an example of what that's going to look like, this nice, what is this, a T-Bird? Fortunately, they actually tell you, this is a Montezuma GMTM. All right, very boss. And if you look in there, you can see I just put a little bit of brown. These tires were completely black. And all I did was paint it brown with a little bit of tan dry brushing. And that's all you need. And then it adds just enough character, just enough flavor to look great on the tabletop. And as you can see, it, it doesn't roll nearly as easily as these other guys. So we super glued that one. I'm going to go ahead and glue the rest of these. And then after I'm done with the super glue, we give it a minute or two to dry. I'm going to take this and I'm going to hit it with a full coat of matte varnish. It's going to do two things. It's going to take the shine off of the paint job. So it will look a lot less toy-like. And it's also 
going to help us because we are going to use a little bit of paint on this Aston Martin 1956 DBR1 from Mattel. And we're going to just kind of tone these up a little bit, including the outside. So looking again at this guy, Mr. Cargo Moving Van, this was all one-tone black plastic. And you can see I just dry brushed a little bit of gray. That's all you got to do. It brings out, it makes that texture pop. Same thing with these seats. A little bright orange chainsaw, a little chain in there, a little toe chain, and a little duffel bag painted up in brown, and you're good to go. This is what I'm talking about with the windshield. Again, forgive the lighting. It's a new camera. It's automated, and I haven't quite figured out the best way to lock it in. Uh, so you can see you can't you can see that you can't see through that windshield. The other thing that I do is I touch up the grill here. I add a little bit of yellow for the headlights. If we look at this guy again, you can see this is one tone plastic. We're gonna paint in some red and yellow there to make this look like a proper truck. And uh, when we're done, it's really gonna make the table look unified. Whatever you do, do it deliberately. And you can get away with a lot as long as you are consistent. If you get consistent results, it'll tie the whole table together. And even though all you're doing is throwing a little matte varnish down on a matchbox, painting a couple of headlights and a couple of tires, people walking by your table are going to be impressed that you put that much effort into it. So, as I said, I'm going to finish gluing these. I'm going to go ahead and shellac it, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how easy it is to add that little bit of detail. Doodly, 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 doodly. So here they are with a fresh coat of matte spray paint on it. And you can see a little bit of modeling in there. Um, and there's a little bit of a color contrast between what's deeper and what's on the surface. That's okay. You know, as I look at these, I always keep my reference handy. And I'm, I'm starting to reconsider using these. If you look at the scale here, this... Aston Martin car is, the super glue is not entirely dry. Well, that's delightful. Uh, it's a little, little bit oversized. You know, this, this truck might be jacked up, but man, if you look at it, this 15 millimeter dude, now bear in mind, he is kind of crouched down a little bit, but he can barely see over the, even if he's standing upright, he can barely see over the hood of this thing. So I don't know about that guy. We definitely want to use this truck though. And standing upright, this is, suitable these this is going to be about four thousand gallons it's hauling and if he sits in there he sits pretty good so definitely we're going to want to use this one however i should point out even though i this came in the same shipment this is a gladiator figure that i got just because he's pretty cool and if you look at him he stands a much more appropriate height compared to this pickup truck right compared to this truck you know he he might be a little oversized so with these matchbox cars you do have to kind of Double check. Look at that. That's probably pretty good. Again, he's going to stand upright. And he's going to look over the, the hood of the car. Anyway, we'll have to see what they look like uh, on the table. And I guess, you know, from, from a war gaming, if they're off, the scale's off a little bit, it'll be fine. But we're not here to talk about scale issues here today. We're here to talk about how to make this, make this guy really pop. And right now you can see we've only really got four colors in here white, blue, you know, a little silver in the rims, and then some gray in here. And so the first thing I want to do is brighten up this fuel tank that's underneath the massive tank. So a little bit of silver. And because we've got that solid gray coating there, all we need to do is dust it with this silver and give it a little bit more shine. The fact that we don't have, that we've got this bright silver here works in our favor because you've got a nice, you know, chrome rims. And as you can see, just by dusting a little bit here with that silver, we're already adding a little bit more shine to it, a little bit more chrome. Same thing back here. It adds a little more texture. And again, in the front, we'll go ahead and throw a little bit more silver in there so not quite a chrome but just something a little bit more flavorful 
The blue is what we're going to do next, and dry brushing is really your friend on these. We're going to take advantage of this bluish color, but what we want to do is add just a little bit more pop, and we're going to use those mold lines to our advantage. And so you can see, sometimes as you're doing this, you even pick out details you didn't realize were there. So just grabbing the edges across the way and just giving it a little bit more blue on there will really help tie this together with our painted figures. So just picking out the edges, dust it if it gets a little too close. And we're going to do this anywhere we see that blue. So taking advantage of the texture that we got and bringing it back. And there you go. So these highlights along the edges and along this post here and along the door, that's going to help bring out the mold line that shows where the door is. That's it. It's already starting to look a little bit more wargamish and a little bit less toy boxy. A little bit more blue in there, a little sun fade, a little fading from the sun. And then we can even do the same thing with the tires, just to pick out that little bit of texture around the edges. Sorry for the tap. And maybe a little back here. Now you can see we're going to have some tail lights that need to go in. So we don't get a ticket from the cops. And we'll do a little bit on the back side and the front. If you can see it. You can reach it with your with your paintbrush. And there you have a little bit more a little bit more texture on the tires to bring out those edges. And I think that's all we need to do with with that gray. It can be a little hard to see those textures. So why don't we go ahead and do a real quick clean my brush here right away and we can do a real quick side-by-side -side comparison so you can see the difference already in how that blue just really elevates it a little bit particularly take a look at the tires right you, you see how much more more alive this tire looks even in the the lighting that we've got here this tire just looks really flat it's monochrome and that's what we're looking to avoid so the next step, and this is where it's really going to come out, and the texture is really going to, you know, what do you do with white? You've got a clean, pristine white color there. And we're going to use the War Games favorite helper here, and that's our Gnome Oil. Uh, on these tankers, all you got to do is just kind of dirty it up just a little bit. So that harsh white, we're going to let the Gnome Oil slow it down a little bit just tone it down put a little bit of black in there and then we're going to hit this too these hubcaps still have a little too much shine they're going to get a little brake powder on them if you've ever done a brake job on your own car there's a nice steel mesh up here and there's a couple of man ways that we need to pick out as well you don't need a lot just looking for the edges And we'll let that dry just a little bit. But just getting that little bit of gray in there. Takes this from a toy to a living, breathing part of your war game universe. And it's not just here on the white. Now it's a little bit too much, so we'll spread that around. But we're also going to hit this bumper with null oil to bring out some of that texture as well. Usually I like to do the, the hubcaps last. They make a good holding point so you're not getting fingerprints in your in your gray. And again with the step here, we want to hit that pretty good. You can hit it harder or a little lighter. And the nice thing about the gnome oil is that it also takes the edge off that, that silver. So if we and then of course we can Deal with the bugs as we go. That's nice. Hey, it's springtime. The flowers are out. The birds are chirping. And the skeeters are swarming. What can you do? Uh, the streaks, when we do this, 
if we're going to have some streaks, we want those streaks to come down. So a little bit of rain streakage there. And then I'm going to go ahead and just run a little extra bead of gray between these side pipes. And again on the back for sure. We'll soak some of that excess up. Move it around a little bit and we'll try to keep our, our drips in line with the real world. Again in the front. And here we're going to hit this, this grill pretty heavy with the oil to give it texture in there. And then we're going to let this dry, of course, and not too much. We still want to see those headlights. Little license plate so we can drop little Easter eggs in there. And although that looks a little bit dirty on camera right now compared to the, the pure white of the, the cloth, once you see it on the table, I think you're gonna, I think you're gonna appreciate how good that really looks. We can move it off the white. I think the color balance might be a little better here. So there you go, right? Compared to our white figure, oh, are you struggling, camera? That's a much better look at exactly how bad it is. Now, uh, I need to wait until this wash dries before I key in the light, the headlights. And of course, the tail lights and the um, license plate as well. I don't do the belly of these things. For the most part, if, if I don't worry so much about these things blowing up, if I need to, I'll build a wreck. I'm not the kind of guy to just turn these over. And if it does turn over, it's not necessarily the star of the show. So I just go with what you see right there and um tell you what why don't i go ahead and do this give the same treatment to this truck and we'll be right back so there you have it a couple of oversized vehicles one i think is going to work really well here if maybe a little bit oversized and one that's really not it's just too big for these i think these must be true 15 millimeter figures Mr. Gladiator here is probably more like 18, and the 18 millimeter figs are probably a better match. You can see the size differential. Pretty, pretty impressive, actually. Um, I guess we won't be mixing gladiators with moderns, but the uh, point is that you know these. Sometimes you work with what you got. This little Ford vehicle had already whited in the. Um, the headlight there, so I, I I went with it. I just embraced that. You know, the other thing I think I need to do is put a little black on the windshield wipers there. But you can see just a little touch of dry brushing brings out all kinds of nice little textures. That little silver on the, the spare tire there helps. Uh, and then likewise with this guy, I don't, I think you can just see, I went ahead and put in a couple of red dots here on the top. And red and, and, and yellow dots on the uh, the warning lights. Those are going to look pretty good. And then on the back side, we put in a little red for the tail lights. Um, silver for the, the, the diesel tank. And tone down some of the flash on these chrome hubs. License plate is ready to go. On this airplane, all I did was to run a little bead of null oil down through all of these little crevices to add a little bit more shadow to help bring out the red and bring out that texture. Likewise with the engine here, you can see the interior. There's just a little bit of detail. And I wanted to bring that detail out just a little bit more. So on this guy, right, let me find a pointer here. I put a little bit of oil right here right in here and it, it helps bring out that texture and you're done even though that plane is maybe a little undersized it's going to work great with the figures that we got so now between all right get rid of you but now between having a jet fuel truck having a plane i do have a helicopter that i gave the same treatment and maybe one kind of half size drone with wings that do that now we got an airport and all it took was basically one evening, a little bit of super glue. The big trick, though, is just make sure you hit it with that matte paint. A little spray can of, of flat 
matte coverage and then your paint can actually stick and you can actually have something a little bit more three-dimensional than just the flat basic metallic uh, shiny high gloss cars and you'll see these on the table when we run through the airport in our game of black ops until we do see that remember i'm praying for you